Aviation Week Network video coverage from the 2025 Paris Air Show is brought to you by GE Aerospace. So, to all of you guys, uh, and Nick from Parastar, what does the U.S. need to maintain our leadership in this new industry? I think we're in a very interesting phase of the industry where you know, I spend a lot of my time uh, speaking to countries, some of which we publicize, like the UAE, uh, places like Ethiopia and India. I think what everyone's trying to figure out is how do they rapidly advance their eVTOL ecosystem? How do they make sure that they are ready for eVTOL? But also, how do they stay in line with what the US is doing? And we found a really good solution in the UAE where we're all sort of aligned on the FAA rule set. Um, I think the next phase or the next year, I know he started yesterday with Secretary Duffy's announcement for him to stand up here and say, hey, the U.S. is going to take the lead, but it's not just the U.S. industry. The biggest value we can provide is take the American talent, the American engineering, and the American companies, and then export those airplanes all across the world. And if you look at it, the, the largest, fastest growing cities aren't in the U.S. They're really in places like Southeast Asia, Africa, uh, and East Asia. And so what I'm excited about is taking the talent base that we've built here in the U.S. and then exporting those airplanes to the largest sort of 50 cities around the world. I think yesterday was the start of that, and we're going to see more of that over the next year. Excellent. Yeah, I don't think this is fair. Adam said a pinch hitter is really good, and I'm going to follow him. I want a pinch hitter. I, I'm an engineer trying to trying to answer these questions. The, uh, I, but I do totally agree that, that leadership doesn't mean exclusivity. There, there's collaboration that has to happen. Aerospace has never been a domestic industry in, in any country. And, uh, and that collaboration is not a following collaboration. So leadership, I think, might be, uh, might be a little bit misinterpreted here. Yes, the executive order, they lean in by the FAA, for us, we know that like we're, we want the same thing as the FAA. We want safe, reliable, and repeatedly produced aircraft. The, new, the, the, the FAA right now recognizes that, and that allows us to move at pace. That's really important. Um, but we, we, we don't have a closing business model unless we think in the dimension of the international expansion and the different applications leading up to that. So for us, cargo medical logistics is an entry point. Moving into passenger, the, these, these regions, Scotland, uh, up in the up in the, the Nordics here, um, these are fit for the type of aircraft we make, and we have to think globally about it. And frankly, the U.S. will fall off its leadership if it doesn't think like that and collaborate and harmonize. JP, what are your thoughts? Yeah, we think uh, American leadership is important. Uh, this is a multi-trillion-dollar industry. It's an, it's a disruptive industry, uh, and. As our supply chains are being reshored, you know, Ohio wants to lead in the production test. There will be very natural ways that these type, these companies, these innovators are going to need to collaborate on advanced composites, on power and propulsion systems. And that type of work historically has been done in Ohio. It continues to be done in Ohio. We have one of the largest manufacturing workforces in the world, one of the most productive in America. Uh, we're an affordable state. Uh, and we've leaned into investment in advanced air mobility to what we call this is a super sector. It's a massive sector. Uh, and, and this, like energy, artificial intelligence, America needs to lead, needs to be successful. And these vehicles will be built, tested, envisioned, and maintained right in the heart of it all in Ohio. So we just need to stay competitive in all those domains. Thank you. Sebastian. So yesterday's announcement by Secretary Duffy was really impactful, to your point, because it's really clear, sending a very clear message to each and everyone that the U.S. are going to be on the forefront. And that includes the airplane, that also includes the air traffic management system, and, and making the, the airspace, uh, bringing more automation, bringing more digitalization into the, the airspace. So what we need is to bring more autonomy, more um, digital into the, um, the flight roles. So you've heard the terms about automated flight rolls or digital flight rolls. We need to keep driving that. And that's where the US can be at the forefront of all of that because that benefits not only AM or us, but it also benefits the GM, the commercial aviation. You can make current flight way more safe, more efficient, and more scalable. So it benefits each and every one of us. So I think that's what's really key for us. Thank you. Joe Van, take it on first. Yeah, uh, building on that, I think, uh, as Sebastian talked about, as we uh, bring in digitalization, as we leverage the incredible capabilities 
uh, of uh, autonomy of electric propulsion, as Kyle talked about, and the, the economics of electric propulsion, uh, as we uh, bring in the time savings that you get with vertical takeoff and landing. Uh, this is an incredibly exciting time in, in aviation, and the demand uh, from cities around the world is really unprecedented. And that's why we need to lean in and really scale as rapidly as possible. And that's why states like Ohio, where uh, Ohio has one of the deepest and highest quality uh, employee bases and uh, the, the technical uh, capabilities, the, the workforce, workforce training is just absolutely spectacular. And uh, so we're, we're very, very grateful to be uh, scaling our manufacturing uh, in partnership with Jobs Ohio.